here we are back home. Uh, we cut the trip short for two reasons. The, um, the main reason we cut the trip short was because it, uh, um, we had a, one of the people on board the bus, we had a death in the family, so there's sorry business to take care of. Um, there's also quite a bit of sorry business up on the Cape, which uh, um, didn't impair us. Uh, it, just, it just meant that um, some of the mob that we wished to speak to were, were busy with sorry business, which is, for those who don't understand, is, is matters to do with death deaths in the family or deaths in the mob. Um, certainly has nothing to do with Kevin Rudd because he's not sorry. Well, he is, he is a sorry specimen, but he's not sorry for what the government's done. Um, that was demonstrated by the fact that he just kept on doing it. Um, so we're getting hit in the head with a hammer. Someone's going, oh gee, I'm sorry I'm hitting you in the head with a hammer. <laughs> a big hammer, please. Um, my name's Kevin. Um, yeah, we've achieved what we set out to achieve. Um, the best part about the trip was that um, on the early stages it was taking us two days to get the information to the mobs and by the time we finished um, a lot of the information was absorbed before we sat down with the people so that the word has definitely gone out before us another good thing about it is that we were able at all times to keep pretty much um, people who are agents of the government um, with black skin um, away from our business um, the government would have been busy looking for huge mobs of people to turn up when in actual fact we were only concerned with the small mobs of elders, um, the ones with the authority to speak for country, the ones who have the bloodline connection and are sovereign with the right to speak for the concerned country. We spoke at um, various, at all times that we dealt with, we spoke uh, with elders at, at the highest level. Um, uh, we finished off in Cairns by the last thing we did before we left Cairns was to sit down with the senior elder, uh, Morgan Allen, who had uh, spoken with his mob and got consent to, to sign the, the treaty to come on board with OSTF so that the Federation can assist and represent them and protect as much as possible their sovereign interests. So I suppose it all comes down to this. The message for whoever it is that ends up being the Prime Minister, or the so-called Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Australia, which is somewhat of an enigma because the, uh, the term Prime Minister is not even mentioned in their own constitution. Um, so I don't know how this person claims to hold the title of Prime Minister when it's not provided for in the constitution, but that's another story. Whoever it is that is the Prime Minister and all the Premiers of the States and the Chief Ministers of both territories, you hereby put on notice. We have, within OSTF, um, the right to represent a sufficient number of the tribes to give OSTF the predominant voice in respect of the speaking for country and for the sovereign status of the mobs. That will be done under guidance and instruction from each particular mob as to how they intend to exercise their jurisdictions uh, jointly and, and severally, jointly under OSTF or with OSTF, and as a part of OSTF, OSTF and sovereign and uh, separately um, according to their own law in their own lands. Um, the government is now squarely on the record. If you want to deal with a peak body that is representative of the majority of the mobs, as you would call them, we call them tribes because we understand under your law you must protect the rights of the tribes. Our tribes are prepared to sit with the government and to speak to government, but the instructions that the Secretariat of OSTF have received from the mobs is um, the government can speak to OSTF and we will provide the information and data streams back to and from the mobs and or the tribes and we'll go from there. Um, we do not, the OSTF member tribes do not recognise the National Congress of Australia's First Peoples. We see that as being nothing more or less than a, a bodgy corporate front established by the Government of Australia, the corporate government of Australia, the executive arm thereof. The corporation is a corporation created under limited liability which means that um, Effectively, they have no liability for any actions that they take or the words that they speak. OSTF, none of our member tribes are prepared 
nor will we acquiesce our sovereign status to a corporation owned by the Crown um, when the Crown has no jurisdiction or authority whatsoever in respect of our mobs. You certainly don't have the right to tell us who will speak for us and you certainly don't have the right to create a, a public corporation within your own jurisdiction and have the unmitigated gall and affront to suggest that the people you appoint to the executives of that public corporation registered in your realm um, has any right to speak for and on our behalf. It does not. And people like of Kerry Arabina and Sam Jeffries and others really need to pull their heads in and realise that uh, um, they're being used as minions for the government um, and they are alienating themselves from the true original peoples of this continent. Um, the time's come. Time's come, whoever it is that ends up Prime Minister, it's funny how nobody really wants the job now all of a sudden that this is on the table. Um, we noticed that the last after we gave Mr Rudd the last ultimatum, he, two weeks and he was gone uh, and didn't fight for the job back either. So what does that tell the people of Australia? Um, the time's come. Come and sit down at the table. You're not going to get anywhere by doing anything else. The time has come. You must now sit down and discuss this with us because we are going to push forward with letters, of notices of severance and notices of competency. We are competent and able to administer our own affairs. We will be sorting out our issues relating to our lands behind closed doors, behind, behind our closed doors, and we'll give the government, governments, or the, the, rather the corporate um, states and territories and Commonwealth of Australia notice as to what the facts are relating to ownership and occupation and use thereof. We also give notice to the government. It does not own our natural resources. The member tribes of OSTF are now fully aware and fully briefed of the fact that they own their natural resources and they have a right to either allow or deny the extraction, mining and other processing of those resources. The time's come. It's time to act honourably. You put our parliamentarians, or rather your parliamentarians, give themselves the title honourable. Let's see if they have the integrity to live up to the title, because to date you have not. You've attempted to defraud the people of Australia. You have attempted to defraud the sovereign tribes of the continent of this island continent, and it's not going to continue. Now that we have the numbers and we have the upper hand, we will take this matter into the international jurisdiction and have it dealt with by international arbiters who are not paid purchasable quantities sitting on benches in courts owned by one of the parties, namely either the Commonwealth or the states or territories thereof. The absolute unmitigated gall of these people who sit the benches and have the hide to determine matters of native title, for example, knowing full well that it is a fraud, um, have been exposed. Their fraudulent activities and nature is exposed for the whole world to see. How can a government that was told by its own parliament that it cannot extend or construe to extend sovereignty onto this continent claim any sovereign status here? You know, who do you people think you are? The time has come to come clean. The time has come. It's our time. It's our lands. It's our culture. We wish to share it with everyone, but we will not be sharing it with the Crown of England or any of her minions. And that includes the so-called executive governments of the states, territories and Commonwealth. The time's up, the jig's up, the fraud is exposed, the cards are on the table. Let's move on with being honourable people and let's move on with making Australia a more just society. Well, not Australia. Let's make what happens on this continent more just. Australia is just a public corporation. But that's another story. So far as the tribes that as yet haven't come on board the OSTF, um, uh, we know that you, you know about OSTF, um, you know, to the degree we've had a number of tribes from Western Australia have made contact and uh, want to send people over to learn about the facts of the law. Um, we're, we're heading your way as soon as we can. Um, if alternatively you would like to, to come on board OSTF, um, have, have your elders, your bloodline connected elders, who are the um, uh, signatories for your tribal council, have them issue a notice to OSTF and to the wider community that, that they agree to, to come to the table of OSTF and sit down as equal sovereign um, member tribes um, and let's get on and do the business. Um, we, the only reason we haven't been to everyone is simply because we were limited in time and, and resources. 
Um, and as we said earlier, there's there's sorry business going on around the place um, that needs to be attended to. But yeah, any of the mobs who who weren't able to make it, we had uh, people from Western Australia turn up at um, Adelaide and, and uh, Alice Springs and whatnot. They came across as much as possible. Everybody's welcome. All the tribes are welcome to send people um, or to just step up to the plate and, and become part of what we're doing. You want your sovereign rights protected against the Crown and the state, territorial and, and, and Commonwealth governments, um, then we can do that for you. But just contact us. Um, if you contact us, we can, we can organise for the, the appropriate um, uh, processes to be undertaken to bring you on board the OSTF. We, the OSTF is not owned by anyone in particular. It's merely an organisation established for the purposes of bringing all the sovereign tribes together with a secretariat that can assist, um, keeps, keep the mobs informed and up to date and, and uh, to commence and undertake appropriate actions for and on behalf of all of the mobs. Um, yeah, get in contact with us, we will we'll certainly help you on board. And I would suggest that seeing, seeing we guess Australia's um, uh, supposedly a corporate state that uh, espouses the virtues of fair play and fairness and honesty and integrity, to the ministers from South Australia who have passed legislation or given authority to mining companies to go ahead and destroy sacred burial sites and other sacred sites of value and interest to our mobs, we would advise you that it is probably wise to prepare yourselves because if you desecrate our sites, our tribes under sovereign law will desecrate yours. Now, you may not like this, but bad luck. If you want to desecrate our sacred sites and be disrespectful to our people, we reserve the right as the sovereigns on the soil here to treat this disrespectful and badly behaving guests, which is all that you are, um, with the contempt that you display towards us. So you put a bulldozer through one of our sacred sites and we'll put a bulldozer through one of yours. You won't know when, you certainly won't be expecting it, but I'll guarantee you that it will happen. You do not have the right to desecrate our sacred sites. You do not have the right to remove our bones from the soil. Under mortuary law, you don't have any right to impede, impair or otherwise disrupt the spiritual practices of our people and the resting places of our mob. Um, if you want it, you'll get it. That's the bottom line. Um, you show disrespect to our religious practices, we shall show disrespect to yours. You show disrespect to our, our elders in the ground, and we'll show disrespect to yours. Our elders have been in the ground since before the white man came here. According to mortuary law, the first law of the Jews, yeah, everyone has the right to protect their ancestors in the ground. We reserve that right under our own sovereign law. Okay? If you want to try and claim the ground because you put your people in the ground, okay, well and good, our people have been here longer. We have preeminent sovereign title, lodial title, over all the lands on this continent. You dig ours up, we'll dig yours up. You bulldoze one of our sites, we'll bulldoze one of yours. Thank you.